Hello and welcome back to United We Stand, Divided We Podcast. I am Robert from the U.S. and we have Lionel from Toronto, Canada. And we want to wish you a happy Candependence Week. And Sean has some really cool and exciting stuff to show us, so take it away. Hey, yeah, it's uh, it's been uh, it's been quite the weekend and uh, going into the week. Um, as as uh, many of you should know, obviously, uh, Canada celebrates. Well, we don't call it Independence Day; we just call it Canada Day. Uh, but it's basically kind of along the same lines. We we celebrate it differently because we don't celebrate it technically our independence from Britain, but we do celebrate having become a country of our own. And it's uh, it's kind of neat that it it worked out to be only a few days before Independence Day. So since I have a friend and and family and stuff in the U.S., uh, we've decided that this is something we should do every year. Is actually have celebrated as 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 uh, during the week and and just enjoy the time. Uh, I had my my stat holiday off, and uh, all, all of you Americans are going to enjoy yours now. Uh, and what is today? Uh, in a couple of days, <laughs> uh, or wait a minute, is it Wednesday? What's today? Today, the third, it's, or fourth? It's Wednesday, the third, tomorrow, <laughs> Thursday, the so it's, fourth. it's tomorrow, <laughs> so it's it's can dependent. So, we're going to be talking about Canada and the U.S. as we always do. Uh, but uh, happy Independence Day to everybody for tomorrow, happy Canada Day to everybody in Canada, happy can dependence week. And uh, before I, I do have a little video, I, I said I was going to shoot some video and take some pictures. Uh, pictures are not ready to be shown, uh, but I do have some video. And so a little bit of highlights of that. I did uh, stayed up uh, for quite a while editing that video. Uh, but first, well, I, I wasn't going to get to that yet, but you know oh, what? Well, that's, heck we, with it. It's cute. We can take it off and we'll keep going. <laughs> I thought that's okay. where you were headed. Well, yeah, I, we we can get we can get there. We can get there. Uh, what I did want to do is I wanted to bring up. Uh, there was a couple of things that popped up over the last twenty four hours. As we all know, oh. Google has made their surprise announcement that we are getting our new devices early, or at least they're announcing them early. It would really be pathetic if they decided to announce them early <laughs> and then not put them out till October, and everyone else is going. I'm not waiting iPhone's got a new one, or I'm going to get the new Pixel Fold, or a Pixel, I mean, Samsung Fold 57, or whatever it is. 57. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, they improve them every time. I, I, they do, so you never know, right? I, like I said, I'm not I'm not the Samsung guy. Uh, Samsung guy's sitting right there in front of me, or beside me, sort of, kind of. <laughs> um, and, 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 and he'll tell you he loves his Samsung, uh, and for lots of good reasons. Uh, what he's not keen on is a fold, but, but I, I will say I held one Google in my hand. Me do it. Google made me do it. Very true. Dedicated and pixel user. I was 10 seconds away from saying, I remember I told you too, not just a few weeks ago, I think I might have to switch because I was starting to get sick and tired of so the problems that I've never had with any of my pixel devices started popping up. But then when I put the beta three on my secondary device my pixel 7 pro which i actually have in my hand here um it was less than two minutes and i made up my mind i'm putting it on my pixel 8 pro it works that well and it's a different phone now uh it's great so i'm super looking forward to the 9 pro but jumping way ahead because we can't be satisfied with leaks that are coming out right now we have to talk about the leaks that aren't going to happen for over a year so in this headline uh, ooh, uh what is I, I don't even know how to pronounce this so i'm just gonna say i found it on a site i won't quote it exactly let's put it that way <laughs> and i'll paraphrase google apparently finishes their tensor g5 D, g5 design uh obviously saying goodbye to samsung's processor uh yep. no offense to samsung but good samsung isn't really using theirs anymore either except uh, i think i did hear somewhere somebody say that the uh, S4 Ultra uh, does use the Exynos in some international markets. Uh, again, I, I I heard it was completely different, and that as of the S3 or S4, they were okay. not going to um, use it. Let me anymore. let me interrupt you. It's twenty four, not four. That was like oh, 
400 years ago. Uh, and it was me that said that. Um, and we debunked that. We debunked that, though. That, no, it is not being used. Anymore. No, somebody else. Somebody else. It was oh, okay. a couple okay. of days ago. I read somewhere. But it wasn't a reputable place. Uh, they didn't cite their information. So I'm not really uh. sure that there's any truth to that. I actually heard, because uh, I, where I originally read it from was, was in a, qu a quote from, from Samsung before the S24 was released, was that there would all versions were going to be uh, uh, Qualcomm. Yeah, I read that uh, too. Yeah, so. And then I read that article. I've told you I couldn't find the article, but obviously they were wrong. Right. So, so basically, discovered. yeah, basically what this means is that is that Google is going to get the absolute top chip making making uh, TSMC. Um, and that's the same thing Apple is using, same thing Samsung uh, gets stuff from uh, when they're not using their own. Uh, and Qualcomm makes their best chips are, are manufactured from TSMC as well. So why go anywhere else? Uh, the three nanometer is, is second generation. Will it be the absolute latest one? Probably not. It'll probably be the S25, not five. <laughs> probably the S25 will probably have the latest one first because they always announce it at the end of the year. And then the first phone to get it is the first phone that can afford to put it in. And that's almost always Samsung. Sometimes it's Oppo or something. But Oppo is not, I don't care how good they are. They're never going to be the mainstream phone. No. Uh, for so many different reasons um they to make good devices but honestly i would choose a samsung over an oppo if it were me uh but i choose yeah Google i've never had my samsung, hands on though. one but you know it's yeah unproven to me but yeah whatever it, well i have my hands on one but it was somebody else's i only played with it for a few seconds i said i don't see the appeal he says well i can do this and i can do that and i and it's much easier for me to 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 root it and to raw I and mean, i said but this isn't nine. This isn't 2014. What, yeah, what this, difference does it make? Yeah. I don't care anymore. If I cared, then the Pixel would be the absolute easiest device to root yeah. from. There's zero did doubt you, about that. But, did you look at him and go, "Do you know who you're talking to?" Right? Now? <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, anyways, okay. So th that's basically. Uh, what I had to say about that one. So now, uh, forgive me. I have to scroll through this. Uh, I very unprofessionally did not curate my list and remove uh, stuff that we didn't end up talking about last week. That's yesterday's news now. Quite literally in some cases. <laughs> so um, I believe, uh, oh, you know what? I should have put on my screenshot back there was, was our beaver that we have up. I totally forgot about it. <sighs> Dag I mean that? Yeah, yeah, that should happy have been Independence my, Day. We, happy Independence Day, yes. <laughs> Went out of the way to get that all done, right? So uh, yeah. no, I, I, no, I know it, that. I know it says Canada Dependence Day, but unfortunately, every time I changed it, it came back as Canada Dependence Day. Can dependence, Canada Dependence is more correct, but can dependence just rolls off the tongue nicely yeah uh so, oh ma black magic i'm gonna i'm gonna talk about black magic uh because this will be able to roll into into the uh the video that we almost put up prematurely um black <laughs> black magic uh has uh had made uh, uh an app for iphones only unfortunately uh for video to do professional video and they they do almost everything that any of the other ones do but they just have a little bit better way of doing it because if you have if you know anything about black magic and their cameras as well as their software black magic is actually one that does davinci resolve and that's what professionals use for movies commercials tv shows music videos uh and amateurs like me just horsing around and trying to learn and do color grading um but and it's and free by the way they have a pro version of course that that has more stuff in it but you can do 99% of what you need to in the free version of it. Well, the Blackmagic app is actually free. <laughs> so the incredible thing is it does way more than stuff that you'll find on there. And they, they released it for Android uh, a week or so ago, a week, couple of weeks ago, whatever it was. I've been playing around with it. 
And I decided I was going to take it out on Canada Day and I was going to drive all over the place and find different neighborhoods and show Canada celebrating and, and, and our patriotism, people with the flags. Uh, unfortunately, it was too crowded, too, no, no place to park anywhere, no place to go. I, I got frustrated. I went home and I washed my car. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the neighbors were washing the cars. So I was like, well, it's still early. What am I going to do? So I asked, I asked my, uh, my roommate's uh, daughter's boyfriend, where are they going? And he told me, and I said, isn't that a smaller park than the one they're doing over there? And I looked it up on Google Maps and no, it was bigger. Easier to get to, bigger, more parking availability. Of course, there wasn't when I got there. I had to drive around, got lucky. Um, but the point is, is it was a small park. I didn't lose my mind trying to go shoulder to shoulder like sardines with people, but there were still thousands of people there, but spread out over a nice area. And then they put on the fireworks. If you've ever been to a smaller town, you see they put on some neat fireworks, but they're usually really small potato stuff. This wasn't big, massive, like you'd see in Detroit, Nashville, or town, town, or sorry, not downtown Toronto at the beaches or, or Chicago or something. But it was something that you you wouldn't expect to see in a small park in some northern northeastern uh, area of, of of the city and i had a lot of fun it was probably the most fun that i had there they had a small tiny little midway for uh, and stuff for 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 kids and families and you know play and and of course you know your popcorn and cotton candy and all yeah. that stuff to buy and they had booths and well you know what let's put on the video and, and you can see uh, make sure the video is not too uh, the, not too loud. Cause it's, you know, you, yeah, and a stage. And this entertainer, by the way, I, I'm not even sure who it is, but my goodness, she's good. She's an entertainer. She's bouncing around all over the stage. Uh, and, and just your typical thing. This is normally what you kind of thing you'd see in Canada Independence Day, anywhere in the states, in parks. People have stuff to, you know going on. Uh, food to buy. They had food trucks on the on the side of the park at the street level, and it was starting to get dark about here. And this entertainer, I swear to you, just unbelievable. The whole band. Uh, there is a section of the video where you will hear it because I believe that's the only part that wouldn't be a copyright because she was she's, she there was not a lot of lyric going on, and it's very short. Uh, I don't know if we should maybe skip to that part because this, this video is relatively long, to be honest with you, and I want to see the firework part. So maybe maybe just kind of shoot up a little bit on it. Uh, well, you, you can actually skip a little bit. You, you'll be able to see it pretty quick. You'll know. You'll see her on stage. It's uh, yeah, maybe just one more little spot. And it should... Uh... Uh, no, it's not. Yeah, here she's playing. This guitarist is fantastic, too. Then she could sing. Yeah. And let me turn this up a little bit. Yeah, just be careful. The music, the, the other music is going to come back in really loud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. I watch this kick she does here. <laughs> that's insane. <laughs> That's an entertainer. Now, if you if yeah. you skip a little bit more closer to the end, we can show you the fireworks part. Um, but I think the, the bottom line is the video on here, and I edited this in CapCut, actually, which, again, is another free tool. And I did it, again, without any Pro Tools oh, let me, available. Let me back up it. a little bit because the fireworks start. No, 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 that's fine. The, the music fades out at that point. But as you can see, this is crystal clear. There is no noise issue here whatsoever. The blacks are black. The brights are bright. Uh, you're able to dial it in perfectly, just like a pro camera. And this is a Pixel 8 Pro, not an iPhone 15 Pro Max. Not a Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra or 24 Ultra. Not an Oppo whatever. This is a Pixel 8 Pro using Blackmagic's free camera app. And this is the kind of thing it does.
Uh, this is the, the one part where it actually got a little bit slow. You know how some of these smaller fireworks shows there's a little lull? It yeah. just happened to be it just happened to be right there, right? So I did a cut, of course. Uh and and uh it's a little hard to see on some screens, but on other screens you can see this really well with the people there. Is that your that's that's the uh the, the gentleman and the, and the lady. daughter's boyfriend yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. i did this part actually kind of for them i'm going to give this to them as as, as as something that they're going to like to see uh so that part of the video is going to get edited out on its own and they're going to be able to see the fireworks and them watching the fireworks because it was a nice little evening for them they enjoyed it the, they had a lot of fun too nice This this should quite literally be the last few seconds of the video. There it is. Happy Independence yeah. Week. <laughs> oh yeah, you can stop that now. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So I, I had a lot of fun, uh, and and basically technology, uh, as we roll into that too, is <laughs> that just shows you if anybody tells you at any point in time, no, no, if you want to shoot video, don't get a pixel. Yeah. <laughs> No, now they can't argue that anymore. That argument's dead. Um, I've never really heard that argument you, anyway. So, uh, oh no, great pictures, but video, Apple, Samsung, everybody else. That's it. Um, but not anymore. Uh, and one of the reasons why is because Google has managed to step up their game enough, but their own camera app does half decent video. It's true. It does have decent video. It's not as good as Samsung's and it's not as good as Apple's by a long shot. But now you can do that. The only thing really wrong with it is I still can't shoot uh, in uh, in log format. Uh, I don't care about shooting in raw on a, on a phone. I would need like two terabytes to shoot an hour of video in, in raw video. But even even in Apple ProRes, you know, or something like that, uh, log, Apple ProRes log, uh, I I they're huge they're massive i'd love to be able to do it but i'd have to do it like i did this those were a series of clips the longest clip was i think i had one that was a minute or something and i ended up shortening it down to about 30 seconds uh, i had several that were 25 seconds i shortened them down to about five to ten seconds uh, and that's a lot of editing basically that video was entirely b-roll all of it you know <laughs> but i had fun um well, that's good yeah, tomorrow, um, obviously, I can see our city's fireworks literally from my driveway. We're supposed That's to be nice. having some rain tomorrow, but I'm not sure if it's morning, afternoon, evening. So hopefully I won't really have any rain tomorrow night. I think they start at 9 Central Time. Yeah. So my my goal is to um, – I'm actually going to take my GoPro and my Samsung out and do video pictures and maybe kind of mix them up depending on how it turns out. and. Um, yeah i found it in a box i thought i lost it. <laughs> that's old school that, yeah it's only a hero three plus <laughs> but at least it's a plus it can it can do 1440 yeah so, so. Uh, we're gonna have the kids and grandkids over tomorrow for you know cooking out and all so we won't be really going anywhere but being that i can see them from my driveway you know that, what's the point yeah you know? yeah so I've been down to Nashville many times and I just, you know, sitting around at a bunch of, you know, a hundred thousand drunk people. Just, it's that's not, an, listen, it's not that's entertaining an, for me anymore. That's an, that's an, in, that's an, uh, a, um, oh my goodness, I forgot the word. I just <laughs> tried to say it a second ago, uh, an understatement. If you've yeah. been to Nashville many times, uh, you've been to Nashville many times just to see hockey games alone. Never <laughs> mind going to plays, musicals, yeah. dinner, you know, yeah. <laughs> I, I again you know what I, i'm going to say this again i never would have thought but it's when, when you know somebody from a certain area you start to get a little bit better understanding of where they're from and, and what things are like in my mind nashville was just i hate to say this because this is the kind of idiocy that people think like if you don't know something ask questions look it up because right. you can't assume stuff when i grew when i was growing up I thought everyone in India was poor. All of them just lived in shanties. That's what I thought. Uh, you yeah. know, it's it's not true. <laughs> this is like over a billion of them. You think some of them have money and live in nice places? Of course. No right. kidding. <laughs> or there wouldn't be a country. Um, 
I thought everybody in Nashville was just basically a bunch of country singing, guitar picking. I said guitar, red, red Gu- guitar picking rednecks. But <laughs> but I also thought that everyone in Nashville talked like this because that's what I always saw on TV, and there was always a little bit of this when they were talking. Ain't nobody from Nashville talk like this if they're born and raised. <laughs> that's real rare. I mean, you you there is a occasionally not not that accent, like- maybe thick, but not that <clears throat> accent. That accent wasn't, wasn't, I mean, that might've been kind of partially some Tennessee in there, but I doubt it. Uh, that's just a lot of what I've heard on TV and movies, older movies mainly. And and people over-exaggerate their accents when they're doing it for comical reasons. Yeah. Uh, when they're sure. serious actors, some of them do really good accents, at least so we think until a native speaker or a, somebody native to that accent says, no, no. <laughs> Yeah, (laughs) it's crazy. Um, it's it's crazy. Uh, (laughs) anyways, so you you you're gonna sit around and uh, you're gonna have the you're gonna have the barbecue going over and some dogs or burgers or steaks or whatever you got. Both, yeah. I think we're doing dogs, burgers, chips. You know the whole typical, you know, yeah, yeah, redneck country. Order yourself, (laughs) order order yourself some Canadian beer. It's a yeah, Canadian yeah, beer, eh? Yeah. You got to get some Canadian beer, eh? Yeah. Don't be, don't be, a, don't be a hoser. You gotta, you gotta really down that stuff. Yeah, you know I'm not about, a beer right? drinker. Get yourself a, a beer two four. Get yourself yeah. a two four, eh? <laughs> For sure, eh? I don't even <laughs> do a Canadian accent while I'm Canadian. <laughs> you hoser, eh? Yeah, that's right. Don't call me no hoser, eh? I'll take you out back and I'll pound you. Oh gosh, can't wait for hockey to come back because me and Kenny, every time there's a Canadian team in town, yeah, we're all about oh, it. Oh <laughs> yeah, well at least you gotta have a good team this year. The we Jets might. have basically lost everybody. We've got a they couple good players. Yeah. They've been they they got nothing. I well, that's not true. They got they still got they still got some great players, but they lost half of their good players. Well, not half, but not about half. I mean, you, you know what? Connor, uh, here's Stifley. You know, I mean, well, yeah, and but here's the thing: Hellebuck. The best thing I would love to see <clears throat> would be if Ehlers doesn't get moved and stays. Please don't tell me you heard that he's already been moved, and I haven't heard it yet. No, it's just been rumors about should they trade? Oh, is okay. he going to trade? Blah blah blah. But I haven't seen. I, anything. I, I is, actually, is, I actually did, hope not. Did they resign Niederreiter? Oh, I haven't heard that one yet. I, I haven't seen anything that, that they have or haven't, but um, let let yeah. me actually do a, a quick little. Check they would be here. they would be they would be predators stupid to get rid of Niederreiter because he was a difference maker in every game he played. Okay, I have to ask Gemini. So give me give me one second. <laughs> Has Niederreiter re-signed with the Winnipeg Jets this year, as of 2024 in July? Specific. Well, while he's doing that, in case you guys haven't heard, the Predators picked up Marchiso. Hang on, before you go there, this, 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 listen to this. As of July 3rd, 2024, no RFA has re signed with the Winnipeg Jets. The team has made qualifying offers to Perfetti. Hopefully he signs because he's a future superstar. Yeah. Gustafson, who is actually very good. And <clears throat> he's he's a he's a great guy to either have on the main roster or well more than good enough to be called up on. Uh Stanley, who oh they should have played him throughout the playoffs. They needed that size to stop guys from the corner. You stop guys in the corner, they're not getting back to the point. I don't know how many I've you know I I should have said this publicly to everybody, but I've been saying it to, for years. I've done a lot of uh, of hockey. St- I played hockey. I played every position of hockey, including goaltender. I've been behind the bench and even coached a game. <laughs> won that, by the way. Anyways, uh, but everybody one thing I've lucky. always said is, if you stop the corner, they don't get the point. How many times did teams fail to score from the point or even get a decent shot when they were playing against Chara? Chara was in the corner. He stopped you from getting in the corner and doing anything every time. 
That's what I'm saying, right? Bufflin did the same thing. No one ever scored from the point against the Jets with Bufflin on the ice, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, and wait a minute now, hang on. The Preds still have a defenseman that plays like that sometimes. He was a little inconsistent last year. Uh, I forgot. What's his name? Are you He's, talking about Yossi? No. You have another one that, that, that doesn't he, – he gets in the corners more. Oh, you, you must be talking about Alexander Carrier? Because he's pretty hard on it. I mean, it could, it could they, be. they just they re-signed him for three years. Yeah, it probably that's probably what I'm thinking of then. Yeah. Uh it's not don't don't say it's Dante Fabro because he's an no, 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 <laughs> no. I'm talking go. about I'm talking about a guy who would actually be in the corner. <laughs> and so I'm not just talking about get in the corner, hit the guy, and let the puck go around to somebody else. I'm talking about the guy who doesn't let anything happen in the corner he's in. Whether the puck stays there, moves on, or whatever, it's not going back to the point. That's that's yeah. the point I'm making. If he's in the corner, the puck doesn't get back to the point. And that saves at least 50% of the goal attempts, or shot attempts, rather, altogether. And yeah. if, it, if you don't get it there, then you're probably not getting it in the middle either. So that means you have to grind for a goal, or you have to get it on a rush. That's the only way to score, grind or rush. You can't set up from the corner. If you got somebody in the corner that stops it, the Jets. Yeah, Carrie, didn't have pretty, that last uh, he's he's pretty relentless back there. So I, I, it might yeah. be Carrie you're talking about, but I, I don't know. I, I I imagine probably so. So basically, the Jets have made those offers. I notice it doesn't mention uh, because they obviously didn't make a qualifying offer to uh, what well, because he's not a free agent yet. He's in his last year. Um, but those are RFAs. <laughs> as yeah. I said, restricted free agents. What? What about the daughter? <laughs> oh man. Okay. Do you have any full free agents that I think they? I think they lost them already. That's that's the point. Oh. <laughs> They're all gone. All four of them. Man, there was a lot of movement <laughs> in the first day. Man. Yeah. From everybody. Yeah, we lost. We lost four, and uh, of those four, three were were starters, uh, and the fourth was uh, definitely a starter that would would have been a starter <laughs> but but it was only starter part-time but uh it, yeah they're they're all gone and that sucks but the jets still do have a good core of defensemen they need to pick up two now instead of one you know like i always said they needed one more good one that would be just that solid guy mm -hmm. but now they're going to need two um so in all honesty if uh if my favorite winnipeg jet player gets moved um or sign somewhere else or whatever it is i i hope that they uh that not sign some but be traded um if if i hope they find somebody that you know get a defenseman like a good one um yeah what's his what's i think they should trade for uh let's see what's his name roman something um uh, good luck no he's, you're not willing to give him he, up he's a he's a lifer <laughs> he he's on he's on contract until he's going to retire. Here's the problem with Roman Yossi with the Jets. While he would technically would have fit in good with the Jets, it wouldn't work this year because him and Josh Morrissey are basically the same. They're cut from the same cloth. They yeah. could never play together because they would. I mean, they could because they're no, both you'd have really a good smart two players. Lines. Well, you absolutely would. But then again, I don't know that the Jets have a second guy that can be is that solid behind him. Uh, the most solid one they have is behind Morrissey, right? Um, but then again, they still have DeMello and they still have um, whoever DeMello's playing with. I can't remember offhand right now, which is pretty bad. Uh, and, and they're the solid. They're technically the number one uh, because they have to be the most defensive. Um, whereas Morrissey is so good. He's he's defensive because he has the puck all the time. Yeah. He reminds me of Phil Housley. Do you, do you ever? Oh, you wouldn't remember Housley, would you? Phil Housley no. was Phil Housley was basically the second coming of Bobby Orr. It was Thanks. insane how good this guy could skate, score, pass the puck, and he got to play with with uh, Timo Solani. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> you know his points were going even higher than he was capable of, anyways. Yeah. Insane. Uh, yeah, those were, those were some good times. Uh, there is one other thing, actually, so I mentioned the Jets, uh, since we're talking about this anyways, there is some scuttlebutt that they're wondering now because of the whole Coyote situation and no Coyotes, 
And apparently the owner, I can't remember, he gave up all rights to that or something because they're going to change it. Yeah, he said that. they're not coming back. He said there's no more Arizona hockey. Yeah, yeah. So there's 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 no there's <laughs> basically uh, is 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 pretty much given up all uh, history rights. So they thought, well, can we just put the give the rights back to the Jets then? Why hand it over to another team? It isn't going to give two rats asses. Uh, sorry, I can't say that. <laughs> uh, Too late. They're not going to care. Uh, well, there was the rest of it. I can't say. Uh, but the bottom line is, 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 did my camera zoom in more or something? They're not. They're not going to care. Whereas Winnipeg fans, like we don't, we want, we we know what 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 the previous you know generation one did right or generation you know what i mean point one uh as opposed to 2.0 1.0 right um but why not have that history and a lot of people might still argue well yeah but what about uh the history with um what were they called thrashers thrashers <laughs> well technically that could get mixed in with it too it, it doesn't really matter right i mean who did the best of the team and this and that and everything else because yeah. the best the best stats for the team history, if you were to mix the two, go to Winnipeg, regardless of it's whether it's 1.0 or 2.0, the top scoring rookie of all time, top point scoring rookie of all time, top point scorer of all time uh, one season, top point scorer of all time period. It, it all goes to Winnipeg Jets, not Atlanta. You can count right. all that all you want, but between Dale Howard, Chuck, uh, 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 Timo Solani, <laughs> Uh, a, a few other guys who were in point, point one point oh, and a couple of guys in two point oh, they've just done more, and they, you know, and then and they, and they let the face it, they've now been around longer that way. Yeah, so, uh, we're we're going to be coming up. How long have the Jets been around again? Now it's it's it's, it's been how many years back in 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 uh, in Winnipeg? I don't know. I couldn't tell you exactly because they originally made the announcement in, in like two thousand eleven. And I think the 2012 they started back, right? So it's been like 12, 12 years it's, already. It's been longer than I thought. Yeah, it's been yeah. a long time. So they got some history there now. And how long were the Thrashers around? Like 14 years, 10 years? I, I don't. Maybe it was 15. It wasn't even that long. I don't think it, it was. was I, yeah, I don't think I can't remember. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't a hell of a long time. And they and they've had two chances, and they're already sitting there saying that well, they want to put another team there. What are you crazy? <laughs> They've done yeah. it twice. Atlanta Thrashers became the 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 uh, uh, Atlanta Thrashers. Atlanta Flames became the Calgary Flames. Atlanta Thrashers became the Winnipeg Jets. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, when you're talking about Yossi, it reminded me that I sent something to Kenny. He's uh, that's my son-in-law. For those who don't know, um, let me just read you these stats because these are impressive. <laughs> okay, so um, he finished twenty-three, twenty-four. Leading all NHL defensemen in goals, 23. Power play goals, 9. Shots on goal, 268. And shot attempts, 602. Second in even strength points, 51. Tied for second in game-winning goals, 5. Third in points, 85. And points per game played, 1.04. Tied for fourth in power play points, 33. And fifth in assists, assists 62. From the start of the Predators' franchise record 18-game point streak on February 17th to the end of their season on April 15th, Yossi scored 36 points, 12 goals, 24 assists, the second most among his teammates and the most among NHL blue liners. With that span, Yossi also ranked first among all league defensemen in goals, points per game, 1.29, shots, 97, tied for first in power play points, 13, Second even strength points, 23, third in assists, and tied for six and plus minus with plus 15. Why the hell did that man not get the Norris trophy? Uh somebody took somebody else out on a date. I, I'm just kidding. The guy um, from uh, <laughs> the Vancouver <sighs> won it. My knee. Um which he was really? good. I'm not saying the Vancouver guy wasn't good. I don't even remember his name, but he was good. He had some great stats. I don't remember. Well, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie to you. I think the last 12 or so games that Hellebuck played kind of showed in my opinion that um, he was on the verge of maybe he shouldn't have won. 
But at the same time, he played well enough for most of the season uh, in front of an absolutely abysmal team at times, too, uh, at times, that the voting for him was so almost unanimous, really, when you look at the numbers. It wasn't unanimous, but it was a landslide. Uh, first time he won, he won by a good margin, but it wasn't like a landslide. Um, and but I actually think that he was better this year, which is crazy. I I I mean, because there were times where he shouldn't have been able to be as good um, as he was. But I also think that Laurent Brassois would, by the way, he did sign away. He's gone. Oh, thank you very much. Um, best backup goaltender ever because he's actually a, a first stringer. He deserves to be somewhere and being the number one guy though. So happy yeah. for him. If he's if he's not number one where he's gone, he made a mistake. He should have signed. Well, they uh, locked uh, UC Soros up for eight more years, so he's a predator for life. So, yes. Wow, that's just like game. Hellebuck. Did the seven year last year, and now now you got yeah. See, in yeah. my opinion, we're talking about. Well, I want to say two of the three best goalies because you just watch wherever Laurent Brassois goes, he's going to show what he's got, what he's capable of again. Yeah, a way better goaltender than people give him credit for. Um, but the two best goaltenders consistently, in my opinion, are Hellebuck and Soros. And Soros, unfortunately, yeah. played in front of an even worse defense than the Jets. And that yeah, was... Well, we were almost last in our league, in our conference, up until that, you yeah. know, record set. I, I, heard, run, so. I heard rumors that they were supposed to be going out to some shindig, and the coach said, you're not allowed to go anywhere. Um, you're not doing anything until you until you go back to work and get better because this losing is pissing me off. I mean, I'm sure he didn't say it like that. But <laughs> I know it's probably worse truth, than that. Is there any truth to that? Oh, 100%. So what it turns yeah. out was, you remember the game where Dallas came in and just completely embarrassed us like hardcore in our own barn. Yeah, what right? they did to the Jets too. Yes, go. The very next game... They were headed to Las Vegas and they were oh, going to let the team oh, go familiar. a day early. And so the team was going to go to the sphere and watch oh, YouTube yeah. perform. Right. And they said, no sphere, no YouTube, get your ass to work. You guys suck. If you don't turn it around. And then they went on an 18 game win streak. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, hey, are yeah. you listening? Jets coaching staff. <laughs> You have yeah. to disallow all of your players to do anything ever, mm -hmm. and they will win 18 games in a row or point streak, anyways. Well, no, Barry Trotz. that's phenomenal. That's yeah, a Barry phenomenal. Trotz I said, love that. Hey, you guys, um, yeah, we were going to do this, but no, you know, that yeah. kind of play does not warrant a reward. You are not getting rewarded for that kind of garbage play. Get back yeah. to work, and my and they God, went to they work. didn't, and it, this wasn't just lucky wins either. I think no. even you were thinking some of that for the first six or seven, and and yeah. I was I was saying, look, dude, and I remember telling you, and you already knew this, not that you didn't I was know, very skeptical but I, I remember saying to you right around the ninth point in a row, I said, you realize that they haven't lost a point. Technically, they haven't technically lost a game considering they've managed to come up with at least one point for nine straight games at this point it was. I said, yeah. if these guys end up with 16 or 17 point streak, you said, that's not going to happen. What did it end up being? 18? 18. 18. And, and I said, and you see, because they, they had to come from way back. Was, that's absolutely true. Yeah. But had these guys even remotely played like that, then their comeback wouldn't have had to have been anywhere near as bad. It basically tells me that they could have played even 50% that good from the start of the season, 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 start of the season through to halfway to the halfway point, And they would have been a top 10 team playing like that. Mm -hmm. And then go on that 18 point game point streak would have put them num like near the top. Uh, the yeah. Jets did two eight-game win streaks. But in between, they lost five in a row twice. Yeah. Completely negating well, all of the games. And they barely... And I don't even say the Jets didn't barely make the play. They did. 
uh, it had had there been five more games and if they had lost three of them, uh, and the Preds won those games, they would have actually went and passed the Jets. It act, it was that much of a of a difference. They, they they came that close. If they had gone on that streak earlier, they would have had a better position, and they would have probably made it past the first round. Yeah, Jets had no chance, no matter who they played. Apparently. Well, this, uh, as you already know, this coming season is got some, I'm sure there's some high expectations. You're going to basically have three 40 goal scores now. Yeah. March or so, Stamkos, Forsberg. They spent $108 million. Why, dollars and they why got couldn't the like Jets Carolina. try to get them? Why couldn't it's, the Jets? Do you realize how much cap room the Jets have right now? They literally dumped about $60 million. <laughs> like, yeah. like, come on, man. They could buy and sell. They could buy and sell almost any team except the Rangers and the Leafs in, the, in, in right now. They got yeah. so much money. Yeah. But. Yeah, I you know, um Trotz did his media event and was like, Yeah, he goes, Yeah, I think we um uh, made a couple good moves. I'm like, a couple good moves, bro. You like bought like the top three free agents out there. But yeah, he's like, I said it once and I'll say it again. I, I didn't come here to retire players, I came here to win and you know, right. anytime I get a chance to put a known winning, you know, player on our team, I'm going to do that every chance I get. And well, he's I, got, yeah, he's stacked. I, it. I can honestly say I'm glad your team is going to be a competitive team. I miss, we hope, the, the fun rivalry we've always had between our teams. I just hope I'm not the one constantly saying to you, Oh, you're gonna win this one, so there's no point in me watching. Um, <laughs> but I, you know, let's face it, Shovel Day Off has been fantastic. I, I'm having my doubts right now just because ain't nothing been done. But he doesn't make moves on the spur of the moment because he has to right this second. He knows he has time. He can trade a guy at the last minute, um, and get it. He can sign a guy at the last minute and get it. He knows he has room to move. And the Jets have a core base that's good enough to win five games in a row to start the season. In reality, they do. Mm-hmm. Question is, will they? But here's the thing: uh, we know who the coach is, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. So I'm happy because uh, our Neil, um, when he took over. Uh, uh, what was the matter with me? Why do I do that? I did the same thing when when uh, <laughs> yeah. when the Stanley uh, Cup winning coach left, and it turned out to be the right decision for him. Yeah. Paul Maurice, and I, I couldn't remember Paul Maurice's uh, yeah. name for like ten minutes. Good. Uh, but uh, the Jets now retired coach. Please help me here, boys. Browner, me Brown, hang. Um, Browner. What? It, it's. I don't know. I don't. I, I it's, it's, it's escaping my mind. It starts with a I B, didn't... doesn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, freaking freaking <laughs> frack here trying to remember a hockey name. So <laughs> that's so weird. I didn't forgot his name. Anyways, when when he was when his wife was ill and he had to take the time off for several games. Bonus. Uh, Rick. Bonus. Thank you. The the <laughs> the um. Uh, Scott O'Neill got behind the bench. He was associate coach or assistant coach, rather. Um, and he did a fantastic job. Yeah, he kept basically the main structure of how they played the same. And and mm-hmm. if you're really a big fan of your particular team, you will notice if that structure changes. But he also did do a couple of things ever so slightly different in how soon he would do things or how he would do lineup changes in certain situations. And you could see the difference. Bonus is a fantastic. He's way better than I thought he was going to be. I wish he actually stayed around. But at the same time, I'm really, really, really looking forward. Uh, to Now I've forgotten his name, and I just said it 10 seconds ago. <laughs> Scott O'Neill. Um, because uh, he's proven himself to be a fantastic coach. 
I think he's going to be great. He's going to be another one of those player coaches. But he's also going to be one of those guys who's going to basically do the same kind of thing that your guy did. Uh, if they're not winning, he, he's going to do something. About it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or hey, if it's a whole team, it's not just you're sitting. Uh, you're going to practice longer and uh, you're going to win or you're going to practice extra. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're not going to be home except for when you have to be home. <laughs> yeah, the, the, between new GM, new coach, last year there was a whole philosophy change in the locker room, and you can yeah. tell it took them. Yeah. I mean, that I think that was a part of the reason why in the beginning that they were just off kilter because uh, you know Yossi was in a different position. There was just a lot yeah. of changes yeah. Yeah. in the in the lineup and how things were being played because uh, this coach is a very offensive minded coach. So the fact that we brought in all these okay. high power offensive people, excellent plays right into his well that was that was the biggest weakness wasn't it was lack of offense right yeah we had no scoring it was i mean and and honestly your defense having faltered last year i think was mainly an issue with with uh when i say faltered i mean they were they were much better defensive core than than what they showed last year way better um they have been and they will be again but it was the lack of offense like if you're not touching the puck then the defense is is constantly trying to stop it right that's how it works. If you don't have the puck, you got to chase it. And that includes being a defenseman. Um, yeah. But if you're, if you're, if your offense has got the puck, then your defensemen just have to do the best job that they do, which is if you have a, a, a defensive right. core like, like the Preds do is going to be a top tier defensive core. Uh, if anybody has a shot at winning the Stanley cup this coming season, uh, I'm going to say right now, um, I would put my money on the Preds before I put them on any other team right this minute. Uh, and I hate to say that. Yeah, I'm not ready bad. to do that. <laughs> I, well, I would do, I would do, I listen, I would do, I would do that based on the fact that they have a goaltender who has been the number one. He's yeah. got a Vezina and he can get one again. Hellebuck did. Hellebuck's got two now. He's been nominated more than once. So is so is uh, Soros, right? Yeah, I think he finished last year's voting um, in fourth, something like that. So. Yeah, well, he's probably going to finish higher than that this time. Whether he wins or not uh, is it, is probably irrelevant because uh, he's been snubbed in years. I, I, he, there was one year, a couple of years back, where I think he should have won, and, and he was snubbed. Was he not? I seem yeah. to remember that happening. Yeah. Um, I think he got the one year, the one year that 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 he didn't stand a chance was was uh, the Hellebuck's first because I. I believe uh, your 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 uh, Hall of Fame goaltender was still playing it. He was yeah. still the number one. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. that's why he didn't have a chance at that one. But yeah. I think I think your guys probably were they up for the Jennings? Not up for you can't be up for you have to be the best team. But I mean, were they close? I don't remember. Mm. I think they were good defense that year, weren't they? Yeah, I don't I don't recall that. But so I, I yeah maybe I'm thinking remember. maybe I'm thinking of the wrong wrong at the wrong timing and everything, but. No, nonetheless, we're talking. Your 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 team is is going to be much better this year, like we hope, much better. So it's not going to be if if these guys play to even a fraction of what they're capable, then (laughs) they should score some goals. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Because it was always you know when when these players here, whenever they got the puck and we were playing against them, I'm always like, oh my god, these are they're going to score because they're always scoring. They're scorers, and that's what they do. They score goals. So yeah. yeah, crazy. All right, I thought I saw a cat coming down here for a second. I was just trying to get, get out of the way. Don't hit my wires. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, um, I'm excited. I'm excited to see him on ice. Uh, opening day, October 10th. Can't wait. October 10th. Uh, yeah, I haven't even checked when the Jets start. Uh, I'm waiting to hear yeah. some more news that it's going to make me want to, you know, <laughs> talk more about it and hear more about it. I mean. Uh, pay more attention to it because uh, I I miss that driving passion. I got to get home right now because I got to. I don't want to miss the game. Whereas this year it was like, all right, all right, I'll check the score in a couple of minutes, and if they're winning, I'll turn on the third period. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, you know, it wasn't like that in the first half. First half of the season, I was like, oh yeah, every game, no problem. Yeah. Every minute of every game, even when they lost, I had to watch it. Uh, it was the same thing when I went to watch games uh, in person when I was still living in Winnipeg. Uh, I'd go to games. Uh, they would be losing 7-2. to two. I'd be the last guy to get out of the chair and leave. Yeah. I'd close the place. Uh, it's not because I'm, oh, he's a real fan. 
because I wanted to see the whole game. I paid for it. <laughs> right. Well, I, I really hope that. that this year I can get back the going to the game with the expectation of winning as opposed yes. to going to the game expecting to lose. And if we won, I was surprised. Yeah. Okay. So that was last year. So hopefully yeah. Uh, yeah. that changes this year. Well, you know, that's because that's that's kind of how I felt um, with the first half of, of Winnipeg. Uh, I, we take away the first few games. They, it was terrible. They lost, blah, 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 blah. But then they, they started winning, and then they would you know win three in a row, lose one, win three in a row, lose one, win four in a row, lose two, win five in a row, lose one. You know, I was like, wait a minute now. And it, and it was got to the point where it's like, you really, really expected that they were going to win at home. When they were at home, you're just like, oh, they're going to win. And then it started, and they yeah. started realizing when they get started getting closer halfway of the season, it's like, they're doing the same thing on the road. They have almost the exact same record. Like you just if you put the T if you put it on TV, you assume they're going to win. Yeah, sadly, until they, was, they started was, losing five in a row all the time. But. We had a better road <laughs> record than we did home, and and home was not home. And uh, there was a lot of people really pissed off about that internally in the organization. Well, you know, yeah. well, they, they're just in the organization. I mean, honestly, uh, how many games did you miss this past season? that you probably would have gone to if they were even competitive, yet alone barely scratching to make the playoffs. Oh, yeah, I don't know. But there was there was a few that I'm like, yeah, I'm just not yeah. going to go to that game. Yeah, now I'm not talking about the ones where you're like, oh, well, the kids are visiting, or, you know, or right, something right, like right. that. But, I'm, but literally the ones where I got nothing better to do, I want to go to the game, <laughs> versus yeah. I'd rather play video games. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there was a few. Yeah. I hey listen, there's a couple of times. I remember a couple of times you you basically would say to me, uh, oh that oh oh yeah, that's right, you got your game, so you don't want to get on COD tonight. And I'm like, no, 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 no. No, no, no. we're getting on COD. And <laughs> I'm watching that game. They're playing the Avalanche, I'm not watching, or they're playing Edmonton, I'm not watching, whatever yeah. it was, right? You know, they they're they're going to Boston. You think I want to see that? <laughs> oh, they did win in Boston, by the way. That was a weird thing. They just won in Boston, but they couldn't beat the Avalanche, who in the regular season they destroyed three times in a row. Destroyed. Playoffs are another whole different ball game, man. You know that. It's it's like a different breed of hockey. It's, it's not just a hockey. different ball game. It's like an entirely different team showed up to play against yeah. them. It's not yeah. that the Avalanche weren't good. They won. They deserved it. Absolutely. I'm not going to make any excuses out of that. But right. But the Jets did not come to play. It wasn't the amount of goals the Avalanche scored. The Jets can only stop them and leave them to one goal so many times. They were the right. highest scoring team in the league at that point at the end of the season. Were they not? I think they were. And they had, yeah, they had McKinnon. They they had close McKinnon. To well, McKinnon yeah. had more goals than the entire rest of the league. <laughs> <laughs> at least it seemed that way when he touched the puck. You know? yeah. he, he looked at it and it went in the net out of fear. Yeah. Uh, the guy's an amazing player. Uh, but they, they shut him down when they played, right? Um, so they it just didn't work out that way. They got into the playoffs, and I was like, you know what? They're going to score. They're not going to be able to shut them down. So this is like all of the playoff games against the Avalanche, I predicted was going to be like 4-3, 5-7, stuff like that, right? Not how it worked out. Instead, it was like 97 to nothing every time. It was like playing <laughs> NHL 95 on Sega Genesis. That was actual theme music. Hope yeah, that's the way the way director. I look at playoffs is I got the I got hockey and playoff hockey, and it's like two different sports. <laughs> Almost. Yeah, yeah, exactly. See, for the Jets, it's basically there's actually beginning of the season garbage don't bother showing up <laughs> um at least that was last year so i'm hoping this year it's great season win the stanley cup sorry predators Understood. however if the jets get kicked out of the playoffs and i hope they make the playoffs and if they get kicked out i hope it's at least to the second round and to the preds because I want one of those teams to win the stinking Stanley Cup. I, I, I would love yeah. to have another Stanley, not Stanley Cup, but another playoff battle. A, re a rematch? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, you know what? Right now, if they had the rematch right this minute, the Preds would destroy the Jets. 
So the Jets need something on that blue line, and they need somebody. They need a Stasny like player uh, in the and they had that Monahan who signed away. <laughs> I told you these guys were rentals. Remember, I said that last year, last year, <laughs> this year, last season. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. I meant. said, I, yeah, when they first picked them up in Tafoe, I said these guys are going to—they're they're, all—they're going to be rentals. I said all of them, as they did. I said they—they—they they, they, they fit in, but these are the kind of guys that can fit in anywhere. That's why they got mm-hmm. them. Yeah. Um, but here's the thing: they did nothing in the last few games and in the playoffs, and that's why. Because whatever it was the Jets had going on that they couldn't get, these guys could not put that up. It was a total difference between what Stastny did when he went to the Jets, came to the Jets. He came to the yeah. Jets and he just absolutely turned them right around. They weren't even, they didn't even really need to be turned around. He just made them better. They get in the playoffs, makes them even better. Uh, and I'm not, this is not a slight on Toffoli and Monaghan. Uh, I would really rather had, had them stay. They're very good players. Right. Um, and they, they'll do good on any team. Any team is lucky to have them. But um, that said, I understand why the Jets did had no problem in not making them an offer. Uh, I don't know that they wanted to take an offer anyways. I think it was a rental and they knew it and they were happy to move on to uh, the places that they moved on to. So good luck to them. They'll, they'll, I'm sure they'll do fine where they are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hopefully so. Sometimes you just, you know, you never know. I, I get. Yeah. I, I, I sometimes try not to think about it too hard because you don't ever know like really what's happening. You know, it's just like, it's yeah. not as, yeah. it's not as easy to predict. Let me put it that way as it used to be. It used to be somewhat easier to predict in my opinion, you know, 10, 15 years ago, but not so much these days. It seems Tom C. Turbis. Yeah. Stamkos. Stamkos was like, I can't believe I'm left. Uh, you know, that they, they didn't resign me. You know, he was like, yeah, shocked. like, you know, but he feels like actually I, I was reading a thing that he feels pretty good about coming to the Preds. You always wonder like, you know, are people like going to be like, you know, screw you. I'm just not going to play because I'm not playing where I want to play. But, um, you know, I think based on what he said, he's like, yeah, I think this is actually a pretty good fit. And, you know, it's, it's probably the yeah. best team that I could have gone to. They're, they're obviously building hard to win. We want to win. Yeah. And I'd love to win another cup and, you know, blah, 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 blah. So. Same with March or so. March or so is like, hey, they're 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 building a young team. They're hard at it. They want to win, and they have a good culture. It's, Nashville's a great city, and this is exactly what if I was going to go anywhere, I'd want to go. So, sounds good to me. Oh yeah i i I think yeah. it's I think it's I think it's a good fit. I like I like that that uh, that you. I hate that the Jets didn't actually push to get, it. or maybe yeah, they I, did, and there was no interest. I don't know. But no, um, no, but it was like I all of a sudden Trotz was like bang, 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 bang. I saw all these alerts. I'm like, he just like took out the money gun and just started shooting it around. Yeah. And now here's the here's the thing about it. Like I said, the Jets now do have all of that. They could take out a money gun right now because they've lost so much. They've got all of this room. They could get like they don't and they don't need to get four guys. They could I don't even know who's they, still available. They, they could uh, yeah, not not a lot, but there's still people that they, they, they could trade for. Yeah. But they could do it uh, in trading somebody, you know, because there's, there's guys that maybe don't fit with a team, but they they have they definitely have what it takes to play in a different team with a different structure. Lots yeah. of guys have that. They move and they just become better. Like Luc Dubois was, he just got better with the Jets at first, at first, right? Uh, Liney um, kind of sort of didn't when he moved, you know. He didn't but at now, all when he, when he yeah, left. He's there's like, now there's now scuttlebutt about would he be willing to go back? Would the Jets be willing to take him back? Honestly, at this stage, because he's a different player and you wouldn't expect him to score 30, 40, 50 goals, you would expect him to get 18 to 30, anywhere in that range, up 40 to 50 points total but be very solid at, at being able to hang on to the puck. Uh, to pass, he's still one of the greatest puck passers in the game right now. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, but um, it's like the it's like the ex, girlfriend, wife, whatever. If it's yeah, the first time, yeah. it's probably not going to work much better than that. Ca- that's not always true, though. Uh, no, Montreal, not Canadians always, have, but... 
Canadians have a long history of letting someone else sign away with someone else or trading and then getting them back years later. And it turns out they're better than they thought. Um, they've yeah. been doing that for year decades. <laughs> so it, it's entirely possible. Um, it's not, he wouldn't be my first choice because he basically made it sound like he hated Winnipeg when he left, you know? Uh, yeah, you, you, there's you animosity, it but it just doesn't. I just so. don't ever think it's like my wife. No, when I, we I got married. Yeah. She said, uh, when we, we actually got serious, she's like, Look, I'm just gonna <laughs> let you know that if we ever break up, I have enough friends, I don't want to be your friend, I don't want to see you again. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> there's, no second, there's no second chance, right? You yeah, know, the yeah. first one, you're out. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have enough friends. So, I'll tell you what, yeah. there is sec there, there's second and third chances of everything else, though, almost. <laughs> <laughs> There's a second chance to celebrate independence uh, yeah. tomorrow if you're American. If you're Canadian, you got friends, family, colleagues, co-workers. You do business travel. There. You're a trucker. You go back and forth, whatever, right? You vacation there. You're a snowbird, whatever. Yep, yep. Tomorrow's <laughs> a big day. We're all going to have fun with this. Uh, we had a lot of fun in Canada. I'm saying this because obviously we need to wrap stuff up. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, but time. I'll end on my end of it being Lionel, of course, from from uh, Toronto, Canada. Uh, happy can dependence. Robert, so you can talk us out of the rest of it. <laughs> yep. And Robert from the US of A. And I should hopefully be bringing you some awesome footage as well from <laughs> tomorrow. So we will catch you on the next one. Have a good night. Good night.